Hey guys, we got us the Diablo 4 Endgame into the Endgame. Let's see what they got for us. Hopefully, exciting times ahead. Bro, yeah, we all play the beta, of course. We're really excited about getting this game into players' hands, letting them experience this massive world. A main cornerstone of D4 is play your way. As a player continues to advance Alt, through the yep. story and into the endgame, they'll unlock a ton of brand new I play activities Necromancer, that of provide meaningful progression, no matter their playstyle. Players will be able to keep progressing in the narrative of the game. Alongside that, the whole team has worked on crafting a variety of different experiences players okay, can I was gonna say crafting, but no. We're going to have an entire world of sanctuary for our players to offer. There's going to never be an absence of something to do. After player has finished the campaign, okay. there's a lot more game to go and participate in. They gain access to a special, what we call capstone dungeon that they have to complete. Once they're able to finish this capstone dungeon, they're gonna gain access to the first world tier. As you complete the world oh, tier, I it see, will open I see, up I the see. opportunity for you to go into your next world tier. Okay, that's that good. That involves unlocking powerful loot, so you actually, new like, items, and more advantages you're for like beating the game, have a better basically. opportunity yeah, in game. Yeah. Whether in you're a fan Diablos. of dungeons, PvP, we're just roaming around the world. There's a way to continue your Diablo adventure long after hitting max level. That's good. As your character continues to grow in power, the you'll start with the skill boards, tree right? and expand out into the Paragon system. Yeah. A lot of the choices the players make are grounded on skills themselves and the fantasies associated with those skills. The Paragon board is a place where you're allowed to have a lot more depth, a lot more customization, That's many like more so. options as you go. You can rotate the board, so you can choose a different path if you're like, I want to do more strength-based things, or I've got mm -hmm. these particular glyphs, things or glyphs. Yes. You can chart your path through it, and they're really a way for you to a keep lot of uh, strength. your character. <laughs> making Plus five strength, dexterity. Similar to the Paragon yep, remember these is things. the Codex of Power. Yep. It's an in-game system that yeah, holds the aspects related to the character. You are able to complete a dungeon, and they will have a chance to drop an aspect that you can pick up. And what this allows players to do is take items they're finding in the world and make them more powerful, turn them into legendary items. It's really special to yeah. discover what kind of playstyle really means the most to you. It's okay. Makes you want to do the dungeons. That's what I experienced. Every in the beta. part of Sanctuary is fulfilling and satisfying. Dungeons in particular are really close to my heart. Nightmare Dungeons are going to give the players the opportunity to experience a dungeon that they might have already experienced in their past playthroughs. They'll They're still keeping the dungeon it to the first sigil um, that act alters though. the playstyle and the intensity new. of the dungeon. They're not spoiling They're anything. More difficult. All these dungeons, all these enemies we've seen them in the beta. objectives, and then they also have affixes, which add a degree of difficulty for you and your group to work through. The One of my favorite there? affixes that you can find in Nightmare Dungeons is actually called Hellgate. Occasionally, these portals will open up throughout oh. the area that will just this? pour out different monsters that aren't native to that region for you to also be dealing with while you're trying to handle everything else inside the dungeon. There's I over 120 see. dungeons to play through and find in Diablo 4, and any one of them can become a nightmare dungeon by finding a nightmare sigil and then using it to activate the nightmare version of that dungeon space. Everything's a little darker, everything's more difficult. It's going to add a little bit of a twist of flavor on okay. your particular dungeon. Well, they're pulling stuff from Path of Exile, but also I'm thinking Diablo Immortal, how you can uh, upgrade There's your dungeons. There's some targeted activities in Diablo 4 that suit one's good, one's what bad. you're feeling in the mood for. The Force of Hell are starting to have more influence in certain parts of Sanctuary in the vast interconnected overworld of the experience. And as the players are going into Helltide areas, they're gonna find even more powerful monsters. And by killing them, they'll be able to gain these special shards they can take to go and use to purchase these big rewards that are available at these caches that are found literally throughout Helltide areas. Okay, the see. sky darkens and the rivers run red, meteors fall from the sky, and the monsters get harder. We really want to create new experiences for the players. There's one I really like called Whispers of the Dead, which you get from the Tree of Whispers. The Tree of Whispers is grim and a little gruesome, but it's also something mystically haunting and kind of beautiful. The tree has a little bit of a grudge against our players, and it would like for them to go Why? serve its needs. Oh, what so is that? So you're going to go serve these bounties, okay, like gather a bar. different okay, rewards, different items, and bring them back to the tree in hopes that it can exchange you something really meaningful. Maybe you're gonna go to the Fractured Peaks okay, and take random. out some werewolves that are rampaging in the town. They're contained activities that you can do yeah, alone. The tree gives you like quests. We really wanted to create variety gotcha. for people to be able to spend time. Go here, they kill a bunch of stuff, come back. It's very cool the way it's been put together. Get XP, I can't get wait items. For to see it, randomly to uh, generated. That's in PvP, Diablo 4, right? we have a focus on the world of Sanctuary. And there are parts of that world that we call the Fields of Hatred, where Lilith's presence in Sanctuary has begun to seep through and manifest these poisonous areas throughout the nope, world. Never mind. 
When players go to these regions, they get to engage in player versus player conflict. I was right. These it is player offer versus opportunities player. for the player to collect shards. But there is a little bit of a catch. In order to get these shards back to town, you will need to purify them. Other players will definitely know that you're attempting to purify your oh shards. Boy. So you'd better Ganking be prepared to fight if you're going to be playing any PvP. Oh and boy. be prepared that you might lose some stuff in the meantime. Once they've got the purified shards, they can take these, go PvP back is to good, nearby towns uh, to sell them. And then you've got to buy a whole bunch of like interesting cosmetic items and rewards. It's a Cosmetics. place for people who really love PvP and want to still get loot and still increase their character's power. If that's the way they want to play, they can. Are you getting PvP specific Launch loot though? is just the beginning. One of the things we're really focused on is creating a living, breathing set of updates for players to engage with after the game has gone live. It's really just gonna be a way to keep coming back and experiencing more Diablo 4 in fresh ways. We're really eager to hear all of your experiences and just enjoy the entire story with you all. That's a new little boss. Um, I don't know what to say, I, I'm really happy with the PvP, I think like in a lot of these games, especially like MMOs, PvP gives you like an extra activity to do that, you know, if you get bored of the game, you get bored farming, you go do a bit of PvP, then you know, you can go back to farming afterwards because your mind is refreshed, you're not so bored anymore. Um, I'm just wondering if you're getting like PvP specific items which will, you know, improve your PvP, kind of like, you know, Warcraft did it, uh, what else? Um, the old the old republic did it a lot of this stuff was just taken from like uh things specifically from world of warcraft right uh and i think it was what tenacity or something was adding which you didn't get in normal pvp pve gear i'm not i don't know we'll see how it goes uh besides that paragon boards i don't know i guess it looks okay again the thing the thing about the um it looks a bit kind of like path of exile but path of exile even like their 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 skill tree looks so much more exciting and there's some really cool skills you want to get in there. I haven't really seen anything crazy in this one. It's just like a, a square and like plus five strength and stuff. I'm sure there's going to be like, I saw like a plus 70 armor or something. I'm sure there's going to be some more unique ones. There's a reason you want, there's a reason you want to spin those boards around. But I hope they give us like some exciting stuff, but at the same time, not too overpowered. Uh, kind of like what the uh, dungeon rewards are doing right now. And I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking of the beta. I think there's a dungeon that gave you the... Um, Become invincible for like the bubble, invisibility bubble for the, was it for the barbarian or was it an item? I don't remember exactly. And basically once you had that, fights were like night and day with it. Just because you're getting hit, you're invincible, you, you start nailing on the enemy, your invisibility bubble is gone, you get out, you wait for it to come back, low cooldown, and then you wait for it, then you go back in and you're invincible again. And some of the fights without that invisibility bubble were like incredibly hard to do on the barbarian because it was a very hard class to play. So I'm saying like, you know, a lot of these changes are, are really major. We'll see how that works out because I find that a lot of these games, if you make some of these big, big changes, those items or those upgrades or those enchantments become mandatory and everybody needs to have them if they want to get anywhere and the game is balanced around them. You know what I'm saying? Because now the, if the bosses need to be hard enough to, to offer a challenge with those overpowered items and powers, so everything else is going to suck. I don't know. I really enjoyed the beta. It was really fun. I can't wait to play the real game. Um, we'll see. We'll see how that works out on the first of January. Uh, January, first of January, first of June. Until then, thank you for watching. Peace out.